Hello, it's Dom Michelle from Boho Tarot, and today we're here to do an unboxing of the Kai Love Tarot. Might be key, I'm a little unsure of the pronunciation of it, but this is a lovely art deck that I have seen around a lot on Instagram, and there was always something that kind of just drew me to this artwork, drew me to this deck, so I finally went ahead and um, grabbed a copy of it for myself. I actually left it wrapped because it came wrapped all cute in this like multicolored tissue paper, um, little piece of washi here, and this little hand painted heart here, which I thought was just super cute. So we're gonna put that over there. And we're gonna go ahead and actually unbox it, which is not something I do a ton on my channel, but um, this was so lovingly packaged that I just, I really wanted to kind of show the whole thing. So it comes in this little plastic box. Um, there isn't a, um, there isn't a tuck box or anything that, that goes with it, which is okay for me because I'm going to, of course, make a bag for it. Comes with a little um, rose quartz here, which is lovely. And it looks like a little, maybe um, a little broom. It smells really good too. So let's just kind of make a little pile there of all the goodies. So it has a little like hand bound booklet here, which is really, really lovely. Um, so in the front here, it has a little piece of vellum taped in that says Ki or Kai. I probably am not pronouncing that right. I think it's Kai. Kai Granton created the deck Kai Taro Love from a grouping of 78 mixed media paintings. A dedicated yogi on the spiritual path since childhood, Kai describes the latest project as channeled. I meditate, surround myself with crystals, light sage, and invite Riki and my spirit guides to be present. I paint with my hands and touch each piece with all my love. Kai's intuitive approach embraces shadowy symbolism with layers of paint and collage. Beyond the layers, the viewer is invited to go deep as you access your inner poetic wisdom. This deck is a sincere invitation to express yourself from a place of truth, to follow your path and be dedicated to the shadow work required to move us through the veil and into a new earth perspective. So that's really lovely. I like that. Um, I'm just going to see here. Looks like it is kind of just glued on. We'll take a little bit of a closer look at that at the end, but you know me, I like to dive right into the cards. So unfortunately, it looks like my full card is pretty banged up. Um, but I think that either I can get a replacement or I can fix it. So let's go ahead and take a look at this lovely deck. As I mentioned in the introduction when I read from the guidebook, this is a deck that it was painted by hand. It's a little bit more raw, a little bit uh, more primal, and I, I really like that. Um, I love that look in a deck, and, and it feels to me like it comes from a really deep knowing place, and I, I quite like that. So here we have the Fool, and we can see here this little um, sort of wolf or dog figure on the cliff. Love the colors in this deck. It's got the little um, flower there, it's beautiful. I guess while we're here, I'll take a look at the backs. It's a lovely blue and yellow. I really like the pattern in that, although it's quite a, a big difference from the um, more muted color palette of this deck. And I, one of the things that really drew me about this deck was actually the color palette because all of these um, kind of grays and blacks and pinks and um, oranges and browns all kind of come together in this really lovely way. So um, I quite enjoy the palette of this deck and I think that's one of the things that really drew me to it. So here we have the magician and it looks like we have maybe a bird or something coming down here. Um, Again, this is a deck that I think is really, it's more of an art deck, so I think it's really open to interpretation. Um, from the images that I've seen, it doesn't really adhere to say like the Rider Waite Smith, but I'm totally okay with that because I enjoy a deck that does something different. Again, love the colors. That's really the draw for me in this deck, I think is all the beautiful colors. So here we have the High Priestess, which to me almost looks like a, like a fairy. Um, I get an almost like fairy princess vibe from her, which is an interesting take on the High Priestess. We'll have to take a look and see what little input of information there might be in the little guidebook. 
So here we have the Empress. I love all of the um, growth, like the plant life, like in her hair. I think that's really lovely. She also has the wonderful little heart here. Love this emperor. I, there is just something about this emperor that really draws me in. Um, I think it's probably the color, that balance of light and dark. I think that that's just really a wonderful energy for the emperor. I really enjoy that. Love this hierophant too. With We just have this kind of stag standing alone on the hill. And he's under this, um, this little uh, temple-like structure, which I think is really wonderful for the hierophant. Here we have the lovers. Again, this deck is really about the color. Um, it's about the texture and the um, strokes of the paint, which I think is really beautiful. Here we have the chariot. Again, very untraditional, but I quite like the, the movement that we see in this chariot. A lot of times our chariot cards are very um, kind of plunk down there. They're kind of static. And to me, I see the chariot more as this card of movement. And so I love the flow and the movement, like even all of the little red flowers here kind of all in movement. And I think that's lovely. And we have like this sort of um, white horse with kind of a black mane there. Gives a great sense of duality too within the one figure. Here we have strength. And we have what looks to be maybe like a wolf-like figure. But again, just it's really the color play in this deck that I really enjoy. Beautiful hermit card. It's like a butterfly, he's, you know, come out of his, he's gone into his chrysalis, he's come out, he's emerged. I think that's really wonderful. Love this wheel. Again, we definitely get that idea, that sense of movement, which I think is really wonderful for the Wheel of Fortune. And we have all of these beautiful, um, the four flowers that kind of hint to those four directions, but you can also see there's like a press of a flower in the middle too, which I think is just really beautiful. Here we have Justice, and the balance that you see here in this card, which I think is really interesting, is in the actual colors themselves. So we have all this darkness down here, and then we not have all this lightness right here to kind of balance it back out. It does say Justice up in the top, um, but I think that we can really get that sense of justice just from the colors themselves, that balance of light and dark. I think that's really lovely. There also appears to be some kind of a square figure here, or square shape which is really interesting. So here we have the Hanged Man, again, another beautiful card. I really like the use of color. We definitely see that the, the figure is hanging upside down. There are some maybe lotus flowers here. And we have this splash of red, which it, I don't know, kind of feels a little like blood. Um, so it kind of feels, to me, this feels a little like Odin hanging on the tree. That could possibly be because I've been studying runes, but um, you know, he was pierced in the side and I just get that that sense of, of Odin in this card, which is really beautiful. Love this death card. Again, this is one that really kind of made me want to get this deck. That um, contrast of colors with all the darkness here. And we have the, the green up here and this sort of um, kind of skull-like figure at the, at the top. And in the bottom here, I don't know if, if it'll pick up on camera, but there's like these little shapes or figures or something is lurking down here in the shadows. And I think that's just really fascinating. There's so much I think that you could dive into in this deck. Um, this one little walkthrough, I just don't think is really gonna get it, but I'm gonna do my best to at least get us through the cards so we can see them all. Here we have Temperance. Again, that beautiful play of the light and the darks. We have this kind of almost moth or butterfly-like figure here in the white. And then we have all the dark shadow of the tree. Just beautiful. I feel like I keep saying that, but it is. Here we have the devil. Again, very non-traditional take on the devil, but it's that play of color. We have this dark kind of like crow-like figure here, and we have um, what looks to be maybe a little heart and the splash of red. Lovely. It's a very interesting tower. Um, I do quite like that it's almost like an erupting volcano, but it's not erupting like fire. It's erupting color. It's erupting potential. And that kind of speaks to me of, of great tower energy because I see tower as as change. Something is, you know, in upheaval. Something's changing. Everything's falling down. But that also brings with it potential. And I love the splash of color here. So it looks like a volcano that's just erupting all this lovely color, all this new potential. And I think that's really wonderful. So here we have the star card. I quite like her as well. 
Um, again, she, she feels very fairy or really angelic more in this sense. I get, whereas in the High Priestess, I had more of kind of a fairy sense. Here in the star, I get more of a sort of angel sense, which I think is really lovely for the star. Gorgeous moon card. Um, not a nightscape as we usually see, but but more as the moon seen through the day, which is kind of interesting take on the moon. Um, you can see there's some things going on down here in the bottom, so we definitely get that sense of the undercurrent, the underlay, what's going on underneath that we can't quite see. I think that's really lovely. And here we have beautiful sun card. Um, I kind of like that the sun is actually not the first and foremost thing that you see in this card. What you actually, what actually draws my eye first is the reflection of the sunset on the horizon. And I think that's a really beautiful imagery for the sun because it gives us this idea of, um, of new potential, of that joy, of that um, it's not just the one sun burning in the sky. The reflection on the horizon, it spreads across everything, and I think that's really lovely. I also really like these little white flowers and this little bird here. Here we have the Judgment card, and this one is, I think, one that I'm going to have to sit with for a while. I really love the image. Um, I think it's beautiful. I love, again, that play of color, the, the um, texture. Um, I don't know that it necessarily speaks judgment to me right off the get-go, but I really like the imagery and I'm excited to actually sit with it and, and see what comes out of there. And here we have the world card. And again, not really a very traditional world card because what we see here in the center is not an actual, like an earth. At least it doesn't look like here from this perspective, but I do quite like the whole encompassing energy of it, which is really lovely. So moving into the minors here, we have the Ace of Wands. I'm going to go a little bit faster through the minors because otherwise we'll be here forever. Two of Wands. I like the balance of the two um, flowers. So it looks like wands are represented by, by flowers and, and primarily stems. Three of Wands. I quite like this with the globe here and the three wands coming out of it or the three um, stems coming out of it. Four of Wands. Very Pip style deck in terms of its minors. Um, there's not really much in the way of people in this deck, which I actually quite like because for me that really opens it up. And I think that there's so much to dive into in, in this imagery and this artwork. So here we have the Five of Wands. We can see definitely that, you know, that kind of disruption between they're not together in a cohesive group. There's definitely three on one side and two on the other. So there's definitely that sense of disruption there. The Six of Wands. So we definitely have that horse that we often see in the Six of Wands, but again, just presented in a very non-traditional way, which I quite like. Beautiful Seven of Wands. So here we have the Eight of Wands and you see that in, in contrast to the calm and the balance that we saw in the sevens. Now in the eights, we see all of this dynamic energy running around, um, which does actually tie into more of the sort of Rider Waite Smith type of interpretation of the Eight of Wands, where we tend to see that um, the movement, the eight wands flying through the air. I think we definitely get that same sense here. There is the wands coming upward with the um, all the color around it. And then there's also these swashes between Looks like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight of them coming through as well. So I think that's really interesting. You definitely get that weight smith sense of movement in this card, which I think is really lovely. I have a beautiful nine of wands. This almost looks like a Christmas tree over here. Kind of definitely fulfillment. Lovely. And here we have our ten of wands. And I think this is really lovely because it definitely feels kind of heavy even though it's with all these really really light colors and I think it's because the wands or the the stems here and the bulk of the texture and color is is all on the top of the card so you definitely get that sense of like weight down on you right you get that sense of of burden and responsibility and and weight and for me even though I don't necessarily see the tens as really being a burden I love that idea of the heaviness of it um, because with all that knowledge that we learned through the ace through the nine, that can be really heavy to carry. So I, I really love that interpretation of it. So the few people that really are represented in this deck are primarily in the majors, of course, and in the court cards. 
I think they're quite lovely because they just kind of capture the energy of the court without being like overtly anything. They're very symbolic of the of the energy of the courts, which I quite like. So here we have the Page of Wands. Here we have the Knight of Wands. Again, we get a lot of sense of movement with that paint, just kind of flowing and moving. I think that's quite lovely. Queen of Wands here. Her crown is very, very large. Her staff is very, very large, and she feels very, very small. It's an interesting take on it. And here we have our king. I quite like this little turtle. And then we have this like kind of blossoming of the flower. Really interesting interpretation for the cups because we don't actually see any cup or water. So I think that's really interesting. There's all kinds of little details too that you can pick out that I'm really just not even pointing out because like I said, we'd be here forever if I did all that. But there's two intertwined hearts back here, which is really interesting. Lots of little details. The two of cups. So here we do have a cup. But the numerological association in this card is actually not in the number of cups, it's in the number of flowers. And I think that's really interesting. In three of cups, occasionally you find some words on the um, within the artwork itself. So here we have love. These almost look like faces to me. I know they're little hearts on um, stems, but they kind of almost look like a face in the paint there. Quite interesting. So four of cups. I do quite like this card. I really like the play of color, but this right here kind of looks a little like mushroom cloud to me. So I'm not quite sure what I make of that quite yet, but I really like the, the use of color in that card. The five of cups, and this is, this is the card that I see as heartbreak. Um, so this card for me definitely kind of represents that. We have the two flowers that are in bloom and still full of color over here. And then we have these three that are like, look like they're just the shell, just what's left over the, the dead stuff. And so I think that's really interesting. We have the heart here in the middle. And of course, um, the figure looks, looks quite melancholy. So here we have the six of cups with this like almost like swan like boat, which is really interesting. And the six flowers representing our, our six cups. Here we have the seven of cups. Again, quite like the use of the um, flowers. I think flowers tie pretty predominantly into this deck. Here we have the eight of cups and we see the, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it looks like there is seven, maybe sort of like stone, um, stone things down here. And then it looks like maybe there's one up here. I can't quite tell if that's one. It looks like it's made out of the same type of, um, painted in the same type of way. So maybe that pulls in our eight. But I think that's really interesting. The number has been cut off here on this one. So it must be um, a piece of the artwork. Beautiful nine of cups here. Again, these cards are, these, this artwork really is quite intuitive um, and quite symbolic. So I think that there's a lot that you could really dive into these. Here we have the ten of cups and we get that almost sense of that rainbow back there, but not quite. And I do kind of like that. It's like, it's the, the hint of it, the suggestion of it, but it's not, it's left open to interpretation. And I do quite like that. Here we have our page of cups. Our Knight of Cups. Again, definitely get that sort of sense of, of movement there. Queen of Cups. She feels very flowy, right? Very, very connected to emotion and water. And our King of Cups. He also feels very, I think it's probably the use of this sort of um, watery, kind of oceany blue. And here we have our Ace of Pentacles. I quite like this one. Again, it's very simple. It's, but it's just... It's just alive with a lot of color, and I think that's really wonderful. Our Two of Pentacles, I like this one with the figure, and we have the two um, almost, uh, I don't know what those are, rocks, blotches, whatever they are. Um, you definitely get that, that sense of two things coming together into balance. I think that's really wonderful. Quite like this Three of Pentacles. This was another one of those cards that kind of, um, cinched it for me. We definitely, I feel like it, it's definitely a coming together of the three things. We get three to the number of growth. Um, we can see that, you know, there's a larger one here in kind of the middle and a little bit smaller one on top that almost looks like it's in bloom. 
That's really wonderful. Our Four of Pentacles. This one looks like a kind of a volcano maybe that's exploding. Um, but we definitely get some sense of color in there too mixed amongst the, the white and then our four um, little pentacle type symbols here in underneath it. So that's kind of interesting like it's underneath the um, volcano and it's going to erupt out into the world. So that's a really interesting look at that. Our five of pentacles, we have one, two, three, four, little five kind of stone-like figures there. And we have two, two little what almost looks like dragonflies, really quite cute. Here we have our six of pentacles. And we have um, the six flowers to represent the six pentacles, but then there's also another um, sort of flowery looking item there. And I really don't know quite what's going on in the middle there. So I'm gonna have to um, spend some time with that one, but it's quite lovely. There's the seven of pentacles. There's quite a bit going on in this card. So again, I think this is one that I really would need to sit with a little bit. I feel like this is a deck that for one, you could read with really intuitively and two, that you could really do a wonderful deep dive into. And I might very well do that with this deck. Here we have the eight of pentacles and this time they're all numbered, which is quite interesting. So we have all of these little um, different uh, materials coming together and they're all numbered and they're all coming together and it looks like it's maybe signed by the artist so maybe this is kind of like the artist card in the form of the eight of pentacles which actually quite works quite nicely with a deck like this. I really love this nine of pentacles this was another one that really kind of clinched it for me. Um, I, she just looks very beautiful she looks very abundant but I love that it's very um, it, it's much more symbolic. It's not literal. And I think that that's really wonderful. She's gorgeous. Love this Ten of Pentacles too. So this whole little temple um, kind of almost looks mushroomy, but sort of mushroomy temple um, thing there really is, looks very similar to the one we saw in the Hierophant, which is interesting. And I just, I just love the play of color in this one. It definitely has a very Ten of Pentacle feel to me, very um, culmination of the suit. I think that's really wonderful. And I'm kind of noticing that all the numbers are the same. So I'm wondering if this is, if it's deck 447, that would be interesting. I need to, um, maybe look through my stuff and see. So here's the page of pentacles. Our knight of pentacles. Now I'm taking far too long. Queen of Pentacles, um, you know, that's that's the card. One of the cards I always look for, the Queen of Pentacles, is my personal significator card. So I always want to look at the Queen of Pentacles and see, is she one that I can connect to? And I think I really can connect to this one. She feels very earthy, quite lovely. Um, her little fur kind of um, sort of cape, or not cape, shawl here, looks kind of like this. Very interesting. And our King of Pentacles, he has the same thing as he's wearing for a hat, which is really interesting. And finally, we move into our suit of swords. We have the Ace of Swords. Quite lovely. Love to just, I just love the colors in this deck. It's really all about the color for me, right? I keep saying that. Two of Swords. Again, we have another figure, but it's more of a, more of a representation of a figure, not so much um, a literal figure in that sense. Then we have the two kind of sword-like um, slashes coming through the artwork, which is really interesting. Three of swords. Um, even though this does have a heart on it, it's not the piercing of the heart, which is quite nice. Um, I do not personally connect the three of swords in any sort of emotional way. Um, so having a heart on the three of swords often kind of is like... Mm. That really limits it for me, but I think that because they're not piercing the heart, they're kind of just around it. I think you to can totally, I can totally work around that. I can totally work around a traditional one too, but I just prefer to see something a little bit more open. Here we have the Four of Swords, and there's something that says something up here. I can't quite make out what it says. Maybe when I get um, get up a little bit closer, I'll be able to see it. 
Five of Swords. This was another one that really, I just really mm, kind of, I found very striking. Um, again, it's that use of play, that play of color, the really, really dark underneath, a really light on top. Um, but you can see there's this definite space between them all. They're not all uniform. They're not all the same. So we definitely can get that sense of sort of um, disruption, which is that, which is how I see the fives. Love this Six of Swords with this kind of dark swirl in the middle. And then we have the lovely color outside. And then this like little island with the, the lone figure or the lone thing kind of on the island. It's just, I just think it's really beautiful. Seven of Swords. Um, here we have the word truth. I, I, I can work with that. I would prefer there not be words on it, but um, I, I can totally work with that in terms of the Seven of Swords. We can think of that as sort of growing into your truth. Here we have our Eight of Swords. And this almost looks like a heart kind of figure in the center, like almost like a literal heart. And then we have all these little things coming out of it. Um, it looks like there's probably eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Well, maybe I counted wrong. Maybe that's not one. <laughs> um, and this almost looks like a fish-like figure. So I feel like we're looking at it from, I think that might be the eye, but I feel like we, we could also be looking at it from the bottom up, which would be a really interesting perspective. I quite like this Nine of Swords. Again, with that really dark heaviness on the bottom, coming up into the... A um, little bit lighter colors, but they're still not that really bright um, light colors that we have been seeing. So we definitely get that sort of sense of, of heaviness and um, maybe a little bit of kind of uh, despair and melancholy. And, and that, that quite works well with the Nine of Swords. And here we have our Ten of Swords. And again, we have um, some writing here. So there's an X and a 10 and just the single sword, but it's the single sword times 10. And I quite like that, um, that kind of imagery for the 10 of swords, because the 10 of swords is often this idea of things really, really magnified. And you can think of it in terms of like one thought magnified to the 10th power, just magnified to this overwhelming. And I think that that is a kind of an interesting way to look at the 10 of swords, especially if we think of swords in terms of um, being the suit of the mind. We can see how a single thought can be multiplied over and over and over or gone over and over and over in our head until it just becomes this all-consuming thing. And I think that's a really interesting interpretation of the Ten of Swords. I quite like that. Here's our Page of Swords. It looks like maybe it says, I don't know if that says today. I can't read it. I'm going to have to figure out what all the little words are. It's just there are some little words in each of these. The Knight of Swords almost looks like a bird, like a bird, human bird life figure. Quite interesting. The Queen of Swords. She has like maybe the tail end of like an arrow in her hat. I don't really know. It could be the hilt of a sword too. Like it's all in her mind. Like that to me speaks of, of really strong um, mental, mental power. And I think that works quite well for the Queen of Swords. Here we have the same of the King of Swords. So again, kind of that idea of, of really knowing one's own mind. I think that's really lovely. So that's a look at all the cards in the Kai Taro Love. I hope I'm seeing that um, correctly. I do um, I do want to mention that the cardstock is really thin. Um, it feels pretty much like um, just coated paper. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about how it's going to hold up, but we shall see. Um, thin cardstock doesn't necessarily always mean that it won't hold up. It also often means it shuffles well. All my stuff's going to go fine. Um, it does shuffle really well, which is nice. Um, except for my little... Got a couple of cards here that are a little bit banged up. I, I do quite like the size. I think because it's thin, even though it's closer to Oracle size, I'm actually able to, to ripple shuffle it and, and work with it just fine. So um, that I think works really well. There's that fool still on top. Let's pull just a few cards just to see how they look on the table together. I probably should have kept my um, mat down so that we could see. Sometimes these lighter cards are hard to see on my light colored background, but so we have the Three of Cups, the Seven of Swords, and the Queen of Pentacles. Always love it when I lay cards in my Queen of Pentacles. 
Pentacles comes up, but that's always fun. So now that we've had a look at the cards, let's take a quick peek through this little um, super cute hand bound um, guidebook. I mean, this is obviously handmade, but I, I really, I like handmade things. I would take a handmade guidebook like this over, um, you know, your traditional little white book anytime. So it looks like we have just a little bit um, for each card. So we have Major Arcana for Destiny, Let Go, and Trust in Divine Order. I think that's lovely for the Major Arcana. So we have Fool, Zero Point, Stepping into the Moment of Creation, I am free to begin again. So High Priestess, my third eye is open. I trust and rely on intuitive guidance. So these almost have like affirmations. Hermit, profound insights. I contemplate the light. I see where true joy and love is possible. So these would be really interesting for journaling prompts because they are um, kind of, they have sort of a key phrase built within the affirmation, which is, which is quite interesting. So for minor arcana, we have create your destiny, circumstantial divine guidance. That's an interesting uh, way to think of the um, minor arcana. So for Three of Cups, it says, my friendships are heart-centered. Sometimes there are three of us. Okay, that's interesting. So let's go to the Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords. What I fear, I don't know. Desire what rightfully is mine. Interesting. And the Queen of Pentacles. Queen of Pentacles. I embody radiant earth. I bring you security, mother of abundance. So that's quite lovely. Works quite well. Just let's look at a couple of the other court cards just so we can see what it's um, what the associations are. So we have Page of Swords for Avatar of Truth, Messenger in Thoughts and Words. I quite like that. Knight of Swords, I fly with the wind. I invite honesty to change things. Queen of Swords, I embody radiant air. I ask the difficult questions, mother of inner wisdom. King of Swords, I honor the spoken word, steward of intelligence, honest. I quite like those keywords. That's really lovely. And here we have that number 447. I wonder if that's my deck number. I'll have to have to find out. So that's a look at the Kai Taro Love. I quite like the imagery. Um, like I said, I saw this deck on Instagram quite a few times before I finally decided to get it. There was just something about the artwork that really drew me into this deck. I really love the play of light and dark in this deck, of light and shadow. I think there is so much that you could dig into in these cards. And like I said, I think this would be a wonderful one to um, really dive into intuitively. But I also think this would be a really interesting deck to study in terms of like your self-care. Um, in terms of your own light and shadow, I think it would be really lovely for that. I might end up doing a deep dive into it myself just to see, you know, what I can uncover within each of these cards because I think that there is quite a bit to discover within this artwork. Um, I think it's quite lovely. Um, it is a much larger deck, closer to Oracle size, but again, I think because of this artwork, um, I think that it works, it, it kind of needs to be larger so that you can really dive into this artwork. And because it is thin, it actually doesn't inhibit me from using the deck. If it was one of those super, super thick decks, I probably wouldn't be able to, to riffle shuffle it. So I'm quite pleased to see that it is um, on the thinner side so that I can actually riffle shuffle it and work with it in a way that works for me. So really beautiful and intuitive um, deck. I feel like there is a lot of just emotion and feeling and so much um so much depth within the the play of color in in these cards and i'm really excited to explore it more in detail thank you for joining me today you will find links for the decks featured here in the description box below i hope you enjoyed this video and will join me again soon for more creative tarot for an inspired life